Good morning. Today we're going to be starting lesson 15 and we're going to be looking at a structure to use for finding percents. Um, I was going to have you take the post test today, but as I'm not able to be in school today, we're going to do that on Monday. So the work that you did yesterday in reviewing the pretest, um, you will be putting that to use when you take your post test on Monday. So we're getting a little head start on the next series of pretests and post tests. If you are sitting in seat one, go get the math books for your group now. You've got 45 seconds beginning now. Go. Okay, you should all have your math books by now and opened up to page 78. Before I begin the how, the why, and the, or the what, the how, and the why, I want to um, speak to all of you in period three and period four for just a moment. I did speak to the substitute yesterday at the end of the day, and apparently there were some problems in period six with a water bottle. And if you are not in period six and you don't know what I'm talking about, consider yourself lucky. If you were in period six and your name is already written on the board, you are going to have two days lunch detention and a phone call home. I do not expect there to be any bad reports for any of the classes at the end of today. I am not happy about the water bottle incident. You all know better than that. Okay, second, third period, you guys actually got a good report, so this does not concern you. Fourth and sixth period, those of you who are not doing what you're supposed to be doing, Figure it out because you already have two days lunch detention. If, you, if your names are left again, you will have four days lunch detention and two phone calls home. So make better choices for today. Okay, so now let's get to the what, why, and how. What are we learning? Well, today we're learning to use reasoning to solve percent problems. Why are we learning this? Being able to determine percents is an important math skill for both math class and for life. Percent and the percent of a number help us to determine the amount of tax, a tip that you want to leave at a restaurant, and also a discount. Okay, if you have an 8.5% sales tax, you need to know how to find out what percent of that bill you're going to have to pay in tax. If you want to leave a tip or your parents when they go to a restaurant um, or for a, a service that is rendered for um, going and having your hair done or your nails done or anything like that, usually you will leave a tip for the person who is providing the service. Have, being able to figure out what that tip is, is finding the percent of a number. And a discount, you go to the store and you want to buy your favorite pair of jeans and they're 35% off. You have to be able to figure out how to find 35% of that, that price for the pair of jeans and then subtract that out for your discount. So you're going to be using percents and percents of a number 
for the rest of your life. And you want to be able to be successful with this. So this is the time to focus and learn how to use it so that you don't get cheated and you don't end up uh, paying more for something than what you should. So how will we know that we've been successful? We will be able to, one, read the problem, two, make a plan, three, solve using a table, a grid, or a structure. And you'll see what I'm talking about with the structure in just a few minutes. And then check for reasonableness. Is my answer reasonable? If I'm finding 8% of a number and my answer ends up being twice the size of the number I started with, that is not reasonable. Your amount, that 8% should be less than the amount that you're starting with, okay? So checking for reasonableness is going to be important. So that's the what the how and the why or the whatever um, problem of the day. We have three examples. I want you to write all three of these in your book. I'm going to give you two minutes to write all of this down and then we're going to do the first one together and you're going to do the second two on your own. Okay, so pause the video here and you're going to check back. Well, I'm going to do the first one with you first and then we're going to pause the video. So don't pause the video just yet. First one, first lunch, there's 300 students. Second lunch, there's 225 students. What is the ratio of first to second lunch? So I'm first going to label. There's first. There's second. I have 300 students. And 225 students. There's my ratio with first to second. But I also want to write this in lowest terms. So I'm looking at 225 and 300. And I want a number that will go evenly into 225 and 300. Well, if I think of money and I think of quarters, I can start with that. If I have 300 or if I have $3, how many quarters do I have? Well, there's four quarters and a dollar. If you've got three dollars, that's a total of 12. If I have two dollars and 25 cents, how many quarters do I have? Well, in two dollars, there's eight quarters and 25 cents, there's another quarter. So you have a total of nine. So now I'm going to look at 12 and 9. Is that lowest terms? No. I can reduce using 3. 3 goes into 12 four times. 3 goes into 9 three times. And now I'm looking at 4 to 3. There's nothing that goes into 4 and 3 evenly. So my ratio is in lowest terms. You're going to do the same thing for the second one and for the third one. Label your the top ratio or the first and then the second. And label your students to teachers and assistants. Plug in your numbers and then write your ratios in lowest terms. Okay, now pause the video here for let's take three minutes and then you're going to check back in so pause here and check back in in three minutes time ready go okay so this second one is kind of similar to the first where i'm labeling first and second lunch and i have 450 students in the first lunch 
and I have 525 students in the second lunch. And now I want to put my ratio in lowest terms. So again, I'm going to think of money. Some of you may be looking at this and going, you know, I could start with a larger number and that's fine. You can do that. But if you're not quite sure how to reduce, if I'm looking at 50 and 25, I know that I can use 25. And so if I have $4 and 50 cents, well, there's four quarters and a dollar. If I have $4, that's 16 quarters and 50 cents, there's two more quarters. So there's 18. And if I have 525, again, if I have $5, there's four quarters and a dollar. Four times five is 20 plus one more quarter is 21. Now I'm looking at 18 to 21 and I can use three. Three goes into 18 six times. Three goes into 21 seven times. Six to seven is my ratio in lowest terms. And there is no number that can go into six and seven evenly. So I know that I'm done. This time we're not using first and second lunch. We're comparing students to teachers and assistants. So I'm going to put ST for students and I'm going to put T period A for teachers and assistants. I have 450 students and I have 20 teachers and five assistants. So altogether, I have 25 teachers and assistants. And I want the ratio of students to teachers and assistants. Well, in looking at this and knowing that I can reduce using 25, I also know that I'm going to have a unit rate, okay, of how many students to teachers and assistants. So 25 goes into 25 one time. If I have $4.50, well, that's the same thing that we just did here. So I can just put 18, since I already know that 25 would go into 450 18 times. And you have your answers for your problem of the day. So now, on to teacher input. Teacher input, your pencils are down and you're looking up here at the screen. Don't put your pencil down and stare out the window. Pencil down and look up here because I'm gonna be going through using a table and then the structure of how we're gonna set up finding the percent of the birdhouses that Mark, Max painted. So here's our given information. Max made 25 birdhouses. He painted 14 of them before leaving work. What percentage of the birdhouses did Max paint? So I'm looking at this here, okay? This is painted and this is total birdhouses, okay? And then this is the percent that we're looking for. And anytime you have percent, it's over 100. Okay, so if I had a full amount at 100% is the most you can get. If I'm looking for a percent, it's going to be less than 100. So your denominator will be the 100. In my table, I have birdhouses painted and I have total birdhouses. And I want to know the percentage of the birdhouses that Max painted. So let's take a look at how we would first complete the table. Well, if I want 100%, I'm gonna be looking at the total birdhouses and my, if I, when I write my ratio, I'm gonna have 14 to 25. 
but I need a denominator that's going to be 100. So I'm going to think if I double this, that's going to be 50. And then if I double the 14, it's going to be 28. So then if I double the 50, there's my 100. And then if I double the 28, that's going to be 56. You could have also looked at this, and I'm sure some of you made that connection. And then why don't you just multiply 25 times 4? 25 times 4 would be 100. You could do that and leave out the step of increasing or doubling. And then 14 times 4 would be 56. And you end up with 56 over 100. What percent of the birdhouses did he paint? He painted 56%. So now let's check and see how the structure is going to work. I have W over 100. Remember the total amount of birdhouses. That would be 100%. And I've got an unknown amount in 14. So I'm going to look at if I have 25 and this is 100, what did I do with the 25 to get 100? Well, I multiplied by 4. That means I'm going to multiply the 14 by 4. And 14 times 4 is 56 over 100. You are making equivalent ratios. Okay. If it helps, remember when we did the factor box when we were working with fractions? And what did I do with the 25 to get 100? I multiplied by 4. That means you're going to multiply 14 by 4 and get 56. So your structure is setting up two ratios. One, you have an unknown amount. Your table is setting up a table and then increasing to get a decimal fraction where your denominator is going to be 100. So let's take a look at this one. A group of 10 friends went to a concert. Six out of the 10 friends were girls. What percentage of the friends going to the concert were girls? So I just read the problem. I'm going to make a plan. Well, I have a table here that's divided into one, two, three, four, five, six, and then I would have four sections not colored in. And so six out of 10 were girls. But if I want a decimal fraction, I need something that's going to show 100. Well, if I have six out of 10, if I draw horizontal lines and made this, instead of just 10 sections, 100 or 10 by 10 square, much like what you did this morning for homeroom, if you're in third period math, um, you use the 10 by 10 squares to fill in a certain number and then you wrote your ratio um, as a fraction and then you wrote your decimal and you wrote your percent. So this is basically the same thing. I had 6 out of 10. When I draw the horizontal lines, instead of one column of 6, I have one column of 10. 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. So using my structure, I look at what did I do with the 10 to get 100. And I'm going to write my structure again. I'm going to put my factor box here. What did I do with the 10 to get 100? I multiplied by 10. So if I multiplied by 10 with a denominator, 
I'm going to multiply by 10 with the numerator, and I'm going to have 60. So using a table, we started out first, 6 out of 10, changing this into a 10 by 10 square where I have 100 little squares inside, I end up with 60 out of 100. Okay, so what percent were girls? 60% were girls. Structured guided practice. Solve using a ratio table. In your structured guided practice, you already have the table here. I want you to add your structure. So take 30 seconds and add this to your problem. So you've got the table and you've got the structure. Okay, add that now. Okay, so you should have your structure added. And I'm looking at my table. And again, I know that I need a denominator of 100. So I'm going to write 100 over here. And I'm going to think 10 times what is going to give me 100? Well, 10 times 10 is going to give me 100. That means 2 times 10 is going to give me 20. So what percentage was caught or completed? 20 percent. Looking at the structure, I'm going to rewrite my structure here, and you're rewriting this in your book. I'm going to put the factor box, and I'm going to write 2 to 10. And again, I'm going to look at what did I do with the 10 to get 100, and I multiplied by 10. That means what am I going to do with the 2, or what am I going, I'm going to multiply 10 times 2, and that's going to give me 20. This is my percent side. What is Austin's completion percent? It's 20%. Make sure you have all of this copied down. Okay, the second structured guided practice. Carl correctly answered 18 out of 20 questions on his math quiz. What percentage of the questions were correct? You have your table. Write your structure. You've got 30 seconds. Write your structure. Do that now. Okay, so you should have your structure written. Taking a look at this side, this is how many he had correct. This was the total. You want the percentage of the questions correct. This is his total. You know that you need to get a decimal fraction. So this is going to be 100. Now, you're going to think, what did I multiply the 20 by to get 100? And then that's what you're going to do on this side here. So take a look at what you need to complete here. 
and fill in what you think this number would be. And then we're going to take a look at the structure side. Okay, so 20 times 5 would be 100. 18 times 5, well, 8 times 5 is 40. 1 times 5 is 5, plus the 4 is 90. Okay, so 18 out of 20 questions were correct. What percentage of the questions were correct? 90%. So coming here, I'm going to draw the factor box. Okay. And you finish the rest of this. What are you going to put in here? And what is your answer going to be here? 30 seconds, go. Okay, so 20 times 10, I'm sorry, 20 times 5 is 100. That means I'm going to multiply 18 times 5, and 18 times 5 is 90. What percentage were correct? 90% were correct. Final check for understanding. I'm going to have you work on these two. Final check for understanding. You are working individually and quietly. You have two problems. I'm going to give you five minutes to complete this. So pause the video here and check back in in five minutes. Ready? Go. Okay, so I have Patricia received a bouquet of flowers. Four out of every 10 flowers were roses. What percentage of the flowers were roses? Four out of every 10 were roses. Every 10 flowers were roses. So I'm going to label roses, flowers. Four were roses out of 10 flowers. And I can create my table. Roses, flowers, four to ten. Well, I need a decimal fraction. I need my denominator to be 100. So 10 times 10 is 100. Four times 10 is 40. Setting up my structure, what percent? I don't know the percent, but I know if it's a percent, it's over 100. Equals four roses, 
to 10 flowers. So I'm going to add my factor box. Ten times what number is 100? Ten times ten. That means I'm going to multiply four times ten. I can now replace the W with the percent. Forty percent of the flowers were roses. Okay, and let's check the second one. Okay. So Mr. Rodriguez's class was using markers for an art project. Mr. Rodriguez had 50 markers. Only 43 of the markers weren't dried out. Clearly the students did not put the caps back on when they were done. What percentage of Mr. Rodriguez's markers were still good? Okay, only 43 of the markers weren't dried out. So if they were not dried out, those are the ones that are still going to be good. So I'm going to set up my um, ratio, and I'm going to put G for good, and I'm going to put M for markers. Okay, 43 still worked out of 50. Okay, I'm going to make my table. And this is good, and this is markers. 43, 50. I need to have some way to make this equal 100 so I can make a decimal fraction. Well, 50 times 2 is 100. So if I multiply 50 times 2, I'm going to multiply 43 times 2, and I'm going to get 86. Okay, so let's use the structure. This is my percent side, and this is my good and markers. Good is 43. And there were a total of 50 markers. Okay, so I know I'm going to have a decimal fraction with a denominator of 100. I'm going to put my factor box. I'm going to put my original ratio of 43 to 50. And I'm going to think 50 times what number is 100? Well, that would be 2. So that means 43 times 2 would be 86. This is my percent side. What percentage of Mr. Rodriguez, Rodriguez's markers were still good? 86% were still good. Okay. So now, exit ticket. Um, I did not leave index cards. So I want you to write your exit ticket in your Swan Math book. Write it after the final check for understanding. There should be a place where you can write some notes and set up your exit ticket. Write the statement. Set up your table. And then set up your structure. Okay, and you're going to have four minutes for this. Turn the video off here and work on your exit ticket and then check back in. Ready? Go. Okay, so let's check and see how you did. 
I have 20 out of 25 questions answered correctly. So this is going to be correct answers, and these are going to be total questions. I have 20 correct answers. I have 25 total questions. I need my decimal fraction. I need this to be 100. So 25 times what number is 100? Well, that's 25 times 4. So that means 20 times 4 is going to be 80. This is correct. This is total questions. I'm going to set up my original ratio. And I'm going to do the same thing. I know that I need to do something with this number to make it 100. So I'm going to think of what can I do with the 25. I'm going to make this my fraction uh, factor box. So if my original ratio is 20 to 25, I want a decimal fraction so I can look at what the percent is. And to go from 25 to 100, I'm going to multiply by 4. Okay, that means I'm going to multiply 20 by 4 also. 25 by, times 4, 100. 20 times 4, 80. Okay, so if you use your table, you get 80%. If you use your structure, you get 80%. So there should still be some time left in the class period. So listen carefully to the directions. If you are sitting in seat one, pick up the math books for your group with your mouth closed and return the books to where they are normally kept. Everyone else, take out your silent reading material and work on silent or read silently. When Those of you putting the books back, when you return to your seat, you do the same thing. Take out a book for silent reading. If you want to work on some extra credit math problems, instead of reading silently, you may do that with your mouth closed. Basically, there is no talking. If your name is left, you know you're going to get a phone call home and two days lunch detention. Please choose wisely. Okay, and I'll see you on Monday.